Hello and welcome to iPod Repair Guys, iPod Classic Repair Video. Today we're going to take a look at uh, opening the iPod Classic and give you a little bit of a how-to guide on uh, doing a repair, a self-repair on an iPod Classic. Uh, with the new generation iPod Classic, or sixth generation as uh, some may call it, the case is actually locked into the faceplate a little differently than some of the older iPod versions such as the fifth generation video and fourth and so on. What makes the iPod Classic different is that once we actually dismantle the Classic we have what Apple like to have uh, called a locking mechanism to hold the back plate onto the front of the iPod. It can be actually extremely difficult to open the iPod cl Classic if you aren't uh, rather articulate with uh, working with small devices and uh, handy with uh, some small tools. It takes a lot of patience as uh, I did find out while working on a few of the iPod classics and uh, in some cases you do manage to damage the back plate of the iPod as you're trying to separate the two halves of the case. I'm going to zoom in for a second just to let you look and uh, give you a little better view of what the actual case looks like. If you notice on the sides the iPod over here and on the opposite side equally uh, over here there are tabs here. There are little slight uh, metal locking clips on the bottom of these tabs. Once the cases are pressed together at the factory the clips engage onto the front plate on these plastic clips here. Let's see one, two, three, four. It's on both sides, as you may notice. There's also a locking tab on the front of the iPod or the top should I say. If you take a look at the back plate there's a small locking clip here as well. This is the top of the iPod if you notice. This is the iPod uh, logo. This is the battery up here and this is the tab up here. With the two halves placed together, you can see the iPod uh, will snap into place. All right. Without uh, actually clipping in the, the bottom and top halves of the iPod, I will show you um, how I actually managed to open the iPod Classic without damaging the delicate uh, shell of the iPod or the back plate for that matter. Um, you are going to need a uh, few different tools. Um, some household items may help. Uh, also some of these non-marring or marring, as you may call them, opening tools. They're more like a nylon or acrylic plastic tool that uh, is meant to not uh, meant not to damage the iPod case while you're opening while you're opening it. Uh, this typically works better on the iPod videos and the older versions. Um, I did uh, go through uh, more than one or two of these tools. They do break uh, when you put excessive force on it. That's uh, that's natural. They do wear down as well since they are just uh, plastic and thin, thinly tipped as well. Uh, did uh, have a pair of 
do have a pair of these tweezers that are round round edge tweezers actually they're not sharp or pointy for that matter they're very thin and uh, they cause uh, little little damage as long as you're working delicately with them I also have here uh, a handy multi-tool the tool actually does have a few uh, a few attachments here this piece I actually found uh, very helpful just because of the thin uh, s slightly angled uh, tip of the tool was a good uh, tool to actually start to disassemble the two halves of the iPod. With that I also recommend the use of uh, small screwdrivers uh, they're also very helpful although they tend to be a little bit more delicate and uh, can can break, the tips can break. <clears throat> I did start, when uh, starting to open the iPod, I started up near the hold button at the top and managed to slip in slip in the tool between the two halves when it's pressed together and just open or separate slightly the metal case from the plastic. This was uh, just done enough so that I can start to work some of the other tools into the case and work eventually around the entire case. A great deal of patience does uh, is needed to actually open the iPod. It did take me some time to uh, do it without making uh, any significant damage to the case or the internal pieces. Once uh, I was able to get the tool into the area near the hold button, I worked this flat tweezer to separate slightly the case, eventually making it over to the clip and was able to get under the clip and kind of pry it, pry it away from the front, uh, the front face plate. Working uh, towards the hold button again, uh, I went towards the side, the corner, and you were able to kind of shimmy around while using multiple tools, one to sort of pull up and out on the, on the back plate. I was able to manipulate other tools into the sides of this unit and then work my way down the side, slowly prying and dislodging the other clips around the board around the front face plate then you need to go back over to the other side work your way around the headphone jack and again down the side of the iPod to dislodge the locking clips and finally with the clips dislodged you're able to pull apart the two halves of the iPod Classic without uh, doing any very little damage to the iPod Classic. You know, it looks like Apple has been trying to steer away from having self-repair done on their Apple, uh, the new Apple iPod Classics and newer versions of their iPods uh, so that I guess it, it, it makes it a little bit more difficult for the, the regular consumer to do things like replace a screen or a battery iPod Repair Guys does have experience working with the iPod Classic and uh, we do have we do uh, actually stock batteries and uh, LCDs uh, as you can see this one is from a, a cracked LCD so I will be re replacing that um, please uh, feel free to uh, visit us on the web at uh, www.ipodrepairguys.com and contact us with any questions or if you would like to purchase parts we do sell parts as well as repair services uh, thank you and have a good day